We had a candid chat with City Line makeup artist Grace Lee about her experience with medical gaslighting. Here's a little reminder of that story. Last year, uh, let's just start with, I had my period for six weeks. I called my doctor and I said, it's, it's still going. And she said, go to eMERGE right now. So I waited for 13 hours to see an emergency doctor and he did one blood test. He didn't even test my hormones, but what he told me when the blood test came back was that it was due to my hormones. I did not get an ultrasound. I did not even get an internal exam. And he was very dismissive. Luckily, I had a friend whose husband is also a doctor and told me to go to another hospital that had an emergency OB on site. Yeah. So when I went there, um, my hemoglobin was at 72. You get a blood transfusion at 70. I was literally great. I had an internal exam. I had I had two ultrasounds done. I had an iron infusion that took three hours because my iron was super low. I just could not believe that the care and the assessment was so vastly different. We got so many comments about Grace's story and the show itself. I wanted to read a few. This one came in from Colette. So she said, these experiences happen way too often. Women are constantly being dismissed. It pisses me off. Sophia said, I was told that I had anxiety after giving birth when I complained about not being able to breathe. Turned out I had congestive heart failure. I literally had to shout in the ER that something was wrong with me. A nurse said that I had the baby blues. Had I not advocated for myself, I would not be alive today. Jenny says, I want to personally thank you and your team for offering such an informative show and most importantly for talking about women's health, shedding light on taboo topics, sharing current research, speaking with incredible doctors is so greatly appreciated. I wish this happened more often. So this is us making it happen more often. This is why we decided to do a round two and we have got a great team of experts to help, including gynecologist extraordinaire, Dr. Jen Gunter. <laughs> Good to have you here. We have talked so many times remotely. It's nice to have you in here in studio with us to get into it for this entire hour. So she's going to stay for the whole hour. We're keeping her here. You wrote, yeah, we're excited about that. You wrote the Menopause Manifesto, the Vagina Bible. These are books that help change the way that we all think and talk about women's health. And you've got a new book. So this is it right here. And it's called Blood, the Science, Medicine, and Mythology of Menstruation. Let's talk about this. Why is this book so needed, Dr. Jen? Well, I think Grace's story is a great example of why this book is needed. You know, it's sad that people have to advocate so much for themselves, but the truth is they do. And if you know how to describe your bleeding in terms that the doctor might be more able to listen to, if you can say, these are the tests I need to have based on the symptoms I'm having, I believe you're more likely to get them. If you don't know what's abnormal or normal, it's really hard for you to even know if you should be seeking care, right? Mm. So, you know, if somebody tells you, oh, you're not bleeding for 10 days is normal and you're informed and you know it's not, then you can seek care. Absolutely. And I think that we often just think, well, it's okay. I'll just deal with it. Don't just deal with it if you know it's abnormal. So shame, misinformation. Many of us don't really know what normal is when it comes to our bleeding. How much blood or clotting is too much, would you say? Right. So we say that, first of all, if you think your period is too heavy, I want to hear about it. So, okay. But we have objective measures. So if you're having clots that are bigger than the size of a quarter, if you're having a feeling of gushing, if you're bleeding for more than 10 days, if you're soaking through pads and tampons um, every one to two hours, though mm -hmm. you're soaking onto your clothes or your bed sheets, those are objective signs that you're bleeding too much and you need to come in. We have a really um, an epidemic of low iron among especially young women. Under the age of 22, it's about 40% of young women. And so, yeah, it's super important that people know what's too heavy so they can get treated. Anemia is a significant medical problem. Okay, so here's a shocking fact. Historically, menstrual produ products haven't been tested using blood. I didn't know this. So they've been using what, like a different kind of liquid substance to yeah. test the product? So they've been using, you know, a saline or water substance, um, yeah. and they they test it. They don't test pa pads. Don't have to be tested. So tampons do. Okay. Um, and you know whether. 
whether testing it with animal blood or not would make a difference is hard to know because you know you don't you can't really quantify and say well oh I'm having 30 milliliters of blood this cycle right yeah so you know we want to know you know light days medium heavy that type of thing but yeah they, they haven't used blood products they've used um, they've used water products so let's talk a little bit about the makeup of our menstrual blood what is it made up of yeah so a uh, lots of people think it's like some kind of like witchy swill that's got like <laughs> hormones in it and it's like special blood it's just blood from your veins and arteries so yeah. what happens when you menstruate the lining of the uterus peels away and what happens just like when you skin your knee you bleed and so there's blood that comes out and that blood pushes that lining of the uterus out along with the contractions and that's how the lining gets removed so it's men so it's blood and it's lining of the uterus and some cervical mucus and vaginal discharge all mixed together. Okay. And it's anywhere between 30 milliliters and 80 milliliters a cycle. What, what would a 30 milliliters look like, do you think? Well, we have 80 here, and of okay. course we used red, not blue, because, you know. Because <laughs> it's blood. Cause it's, so, so this is 80 milliliters. I know it always seems like you're bleeding more, um, but, you know, you get a little bit of blood in the toilet and it looks like a lot. But obviously, if you look at this and you say, I bleed way more than this, then you need to talk to your medical provider. Right. Over a course of an entire cycle? Yeah, over a course of an entire cycle, yeah. Okay, that's yeah. the up, that's the most. That's the amount of blood, but remember there's like discharge in yeah. it and other things, so it may appear to be a little bit more. Okay, that's fair. Let's talk a little bit about pain. So is period pain just a fact of life? And how do we know when it's actually, it's, it's too painful? It's serious. Yeah, so unfortunately, pain is a byproduct of making the uterus stop bleeding, of having the lining come out. And some people have very little pain or almost no pain, and some people have really bad pain, and people are everywhere in between. And there are also medical conditions that can cause pain. So again, pain is a very personal experience, and I would say that if, the pain, if you feel your pain is affecting your day, then, then you should seek care. Now, many people will be treated very well with over-the-counter like ibuprofen or something like a TENS unit, but other things may also be needed, and you may, may need to have investigations to make sure you don't have a condition like endometriosis or adenomyosis, which can cause pain. So you're saying trust yourself. Yeah, if it's painful, you know if you're having pain. Yeah. You know, it's, if you're having pain, then, and it's, it's not going away with taking an ibuprofen, and it's affecting you, absolutely, it's time to talk to somebody. A study found that it takes an average of eight years for someone to receive an endometriosis diagnosis. So our supervising producer was diagnosed with adenomyosis. Adenomyosis, yeah. Adenomyosis, I yeah. can't say it. <laughs> too many consonants, too many vowels, well, Doc. it's not an intuitive word, but adenomyosis, yeah. And so that diagnosis she got in her 40s uh, after years of pain. So what does this tell us? And why does it take so long to find endometriosis? So endometriosis and adenomyosis are different conditions. Mm -hmm. um, endometriosis is where the lining of the uterus or tissue similar to the lining of the uterus is growing outside in the pelvic cavity. And it can cause severe pain, it can cause infertility, but it's quite enigmatic because people can have a lot of it and also have no symptoms at all. Oh, okay. So we don't really understand. I think what the delay tells us is that women have their pain dismissed mm -hmm. and so they just get sort of pushed off or they try a therapy and it doesn't work and then they kind of give up and they'll go back again. You know, and if somebody's telling you, oh, well, you, your pain shouldn't be that bad, you can see why they wouldn't go back, right? Because yep. they're not getting they're not getting the care they need. Yep. We are now changing how we diagnose endometriosis. We're saying that it's okay to make a clinical diagnosis. I mean, you don't have to have surgery and hopefully that will get more people kind of into appropriate treatment sooner. Also, we can pick up probably two-thirds to three-quarters of endometriosis with an MRI scan. So okay. we have sort of newer diagnostic modalities as well. But it shouldn't take, you know, longer. Usually when we put people on medications for pain, like ibuprofen or the birth control pill, at most you need a six-month trial. So, so there's no excuse for seven years, right? Yeah. There's, there's an absolutely, yes, six months would be appropriate to say we're going to give you this first-line treatment and see how it works. Mm -hmm. But at six months, if you're no better, then you need to be moving on to the next thing. Uh, when it comes back to pain then, what can we do if we feel our pain isn't being taken seriously? Yeah, so, so I would say advocate, you know, it's so hard to advocate when you're not being taken seriously. Mm -hmm. um, I've had people take in things that I've written to the doctor. You know, okay. this is like, you know, when they've had uh, other symptoms or menopause symptoms and they haven't been able to get hormones, and they've, they've taken in the menopause manifesto and said, well, Dr. Jen Gunter says this, right? Get the book and take it in. I mean, you shouldn't yeah. have to do that. But, you know, showing your doctor that you've read up on this, you know, this isn't just something you heard in a chat room. You've been going to like legitimate sources to get good quality information. And you can print off from the 
SOGC. You can go to their website, the Society of Obstetricians and Gynecologists of Canada. Mm -hmm. They have information about endometriosis. Take that in and say, hey, you know what? I'm really concerned this might be what's going on. I want a referral to someone who knows. Good advice.